Um, um, Neil, it's cute. So I, I just wanted to share a little bit about um, some of the background of what's been going on in North Carolina. Um, recently, um, well, Monday, um, there was a, um, a, uh, or sorry, thir Thursday, I, I don't really have my weekend. Recently, there was a bill, there was a, there's a bill passed, um, in the span of, uh, 12 hours, um, extremely rapidly, um, um, that was, um, the legislature called a special session, um, in response to a city order ordinance, um, that had been passed in Charlotte, um, that was scheduled to go into effect for April 1st. Um, and the legislature was so concerned that the city ordinance would be um, a disaster um, that they called a special session um, just to just to pass a bill um, that would make uh, that would nullify that city ordinance and make it impossible for other cities to pass similar ordinances. Um, and what was in the city ordinance um, was specifically. Um, non-discrimination policies around um, around uh, gender identity, gender expression, um, and sexual orientation. Um, and there was also um, there was also um, pieces around um, around city around the city um, declaring its own. Um, minimum municipal minimum wage, um, and so the bill that the legislature passed in order to um, sort of preempt the city ordinance from going into effect and stopping similar things um, does a lot of things. Um, it prohibits um, cities from passing um, non-discrimination policies um, that take. Uh, gender identity, expression, and sexual orientation into account. It also um, m makes it impossible for workers um, to sue bosses on the basis of any kind of discrimination, be it racial, um, gender, religious, um, whatever, um, at the state level. Um, so they could only sue their bosses at the federal level, which um, I'm sure y'all know is uh, damn near impossible um, and extremely cost prohibit prohibitive. Um, it also um, it also makes it um, it also uh, has specific uh, pieces around uh, around bathroom use um, and. Um, Sort of um, makes makes the the practice of uh, the possibility of having uh, multiple occupancy, gender neutral bathrooms um, illegal, um, and makes it um, makes it a, um, a crime to be in the quote unquote wrong bathroom, um, and this obviously impacts. Um, trans folks, specifically trans folks of color, who are more likely to be criminalized um, for um, anything, um, but also impacts folks with disabilities who may have um, a caregiver who um, either of them are trans or they're not the same gender, and um, and they need um, they need their caregiver to give them assistance in the bathroom. Um, it also gives businesses the right to refuse service to people um, on any grounds. Um, businesses can refuse service to trans um, and LGBT people um, as well as disabled folks um, because, um, because of this, this, this bathroom clause. Um, and so um, um, I, along with um, along with uh, Lodge as a, another comrade in the Durham branch, um, and um, some some other folks that we've been organizing with, um, 
earlier this year, um, around um, around September. Um, sorry, last year around September, um, there was a there was a queer and trans people of color um, coalition that emerged under the banner of Black Lives Matter, and it's a statewide coalition. Um, and so, some other folks from from that um, grouping were with us um, in the legislature when when the bill was originally passed. Um, we all. Um, we thought about, we discussed planning a disruption, but because um, it happened so quickly and um, it was happening in the middle of a, a work slash school day, um, there was there was not uh, not that much uh, mobilization that we were able to to do, and so we decided we were going to uh, try and give public comment on the bill. Um, and um, a lot of the rhetoric that is going into the passage of this bill um, is um, this this panic about the idea that uh, that trans women are are racist, that trans women are not really women, um, and that um, this uh, this Charlotte City ordinance, which would have allowed um, trans people. Um, to um, to use bathrooms based on their their um, identity rather than um, uh, documentation um, would have um, would have made uh, women uh, cis women vulnerable to to rape um, because trans women are not really women and they would be in there to um, to assault people. It's obviously really really triggering. Um, and um, an upsetting rhetoric to be going into this bill. Um, and so we heard a lot of that in public comment. We also heard um, a lot of sort of respect to gay um, HRC and um, and the like folks, um, white, white trans folks um, going up there and talking about um, you know, look at how well, I pass, and um, you know you can't um, you can't pass this bill because it will affect people like me who are respectable and white and who pass so well. Um, and um, and then we uh, all all of the people of color who had signed up for public comment were actually denied a chance to speak. Um, and when I when I tried to um, when I tried to speak and and sort of. Uh, de demand that space because we had um, we had signed up for public comment and um, um, I was uh, escorted out of the building um, and um, and so after after the bill was passed um, as a we we uh, had a series of conference calls with the coalition um, and we decided it was. Um, really necessary in this moment to uplift um, this bill under um, under the banner of Black Lives Matter um, and with specifically um, queer and trans people of color um, lens because we were, we were being silenced um, and excluded from the conversation um, when um, we're the ones who are who are going to be most most directly impacted, um, and there there hadn't been conversation um, from other trans and queer folks about um, about the the, min the minimum wage um, portion of this bill or any of the um, any of the portions of this bill affecting workers' rights as if. Uh, trans and, and queer people aren't workers too um and that was definitely something that we we felt we needed to to respond to and bring to light in our response um and so um we um we planned a um a demonstration at the at the governor's mansion um there had actually been um um, uh, uh, Equality NC, which is sort of uh, the, the state chapter of the HRC Human Rights Campaign, which is a sort of um, big name, um, respected gay, um, 
501c3 um, called a, a quote unquote rally at a Unitarian church um, and they they basically sat inside and I had a lecture to my understanding um, and so we we're not okay with that being the response especially since that quote unquote rally had been uh, had been planned and called um, even before the bill was passed and um, those folks did not really do anything to, to show up and disrupt the initial um, the initial passing of the bill um, when they had a lot more capacity and resources to do something like that. Um, and so we decided it was important to um, to say that that we didn't we as as folks um, who who work under the banner of the banner of Black Lives Matter and who are queer and trans folks of color that we didn't we didn't stand with them. Um, and um, and that was not the kind of response that we need in this moment. Um, so we called a, a, a demonstration at the same time um, at the governor's mansion. Um, we um, we had a much uh, we had a much larger turnout, and actually ended up having some of the some of the the white folks who have, who would have been. Um, normally at that rally come to ours, um, which was an interesting dynamic. Um, we, um, we were able to, to take the street in front of the governor's mansion, um, and um, some uh, five, five brave folks in our coalition, uh, com comrades uh, from the Durham Branch Lawn, Tran and Jess Jude, um, along with um, a couple of other um, folks from uh, Song Southerners on New Ground, um, which is a, a local uh, queer and trans-led organization, um, came themselves together in the middle of the street um, and were, were arrested for doing civil dis disobedience by, by remaining in the street after we were asked to disperse. But we did hold the street uh, collectively as, um, I, I believe, at least a, um, a thousand folks um, for two and a half hours. Um, and um, we held a, a people's special session in the street um, because, um, you know, during the the legislative special session, um, the voices of queer and trans folks of color were not heard. Um, so we held a, a people's special session in the street, um, and we held space specifically for um, for uh, trans people of color um, to share their rage, their feelings, their experiences, um, and their, um, their visions for um, moving forward. Um, which was which was really powerful. Um, which was really really powerful to to have in that space, and uh, particularly to have um, all of those um, all of those white folks who weren't used to that have to sit with that was was interest an interesting dynamic. But um, it happened, um, and. Um, yeah, and so I think it was, it was really powerful. There was, there was definitely a lot of energy around this, this specific um, bill. A lot of it is coming from um, is coming from white um, white LGBTQ folks who um, aren't normally out for for other things. But I think that um, I think that the the things that this this coalition has been doing and um, and did last night um, really helped to, to politicize some of those folks um, and to to um, give them an analysis that put them um, in a larger and more intersectional uh, context. Um, and um, we also, as a coalition, released a statement, um, which I can I can find a way to pass on to y'all, or if you would like, uh, I can read it on this call. Um, I, I'm I'm going to offer to to send it in an email to y'all uh, to be respectful of your time. Um, but um, yeah, I guess that's that's what I have to share. Um, I'm I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone may have. Um, 
Black Lives Matter Insurance People of Color Coalition response to NCHB2. Um, on the anniversary of the passing of Blake Brockington, a black trans teen from Charlotte, North Carolina, Governor Pat McCrory and the North Carolina General Assembly moved to attack working people um, and create a dangerous conditions for women, LGBTQ people, black and brown people, and any workers who experience discrimination for who struggle to make ends meet. The General Assembly and Governor McCrory chose to criminalize trans and gender nonconforming children and youth and to scapegoat trans women and other trans people for rape by passing NCHB2. House Bill 2 bars city and county governments from raising their municipal minimum wage, as well as prohibits anti-discrimination policies that account for gender identity, expression, and sexual orientation. Lawmakers were given only five minutes to review the bill, and it passed within a 12-hour period without a single trans person of color being allowed to speak. This bill reinforces the school-to-prison pipeline that trans and non gender nonconforming students already face by making their choice of toilet grounds for by making their choice of toilet grounds for suspension or arrest. This bill rolls back decades of hard won progress and will harm our whole state. It undermines municipal de municipal democratic control, advancements in anti discrimination policy and for further prohibits wage increases. This is a direct assault on working families and particularly working women of color who are most likely to be paid poverty wages. LGBTQ folks of color are workers and we are worth more. This bill uses trans panic and the scapegoating of trans women to derail real conversations about safety and consent. Trans and queer people are survivors of sexual assault too. Our safety matters and we don't make our community safer by threatening others with the brute force of the murderous police or incarceration. If our state is truly concerned for survivors of sexual assault, it will make comprehensive consent and sex education mandatory. This law does nothing to, pre to prevent indecent exposure and sexual assault, which are already illegal, but instead prevents local governments from protecting the safety and livelihoods of queer and trans people. We honor and fight for Blake by affirming that our lives matter. Anti-transgender bi bias and legislation and persistent structural racism directly impact the devastating rates of suicidality, underemployment, unemployment, physical and sexual violence, poverty, incarceration, and homelessness experienced by transgender people of color. Trans and queer people of color demand a living wage and freedom from criminalization and discrimination in the workplace and in the bathroom. Tonight, we are calling for a special session of the people outside of the governor's mansion. For Blake Brockington, for Angel Alicia Walker, for all black and brown trans people in North Carolina who have been murdered, disappeared, or incarcerated, it is our duty to speak. It is our duty to demand freedom, to demand a living wage, to demand education, and to demand comprehensive health care that is accessible and free of charge. Um.